Welcome to our lecture online, and now let's see what Aristotelus brought to the table. Well, it turns out that Aristarchus had already done a tremendous job figuring out the size of the moon relative to the size of the earth and the size of the sun relative to the size of the earth. And even he came, he went ahead and calculated the distance to the moon relative to the earth and the distance to the sun relative to the earth. But he didn't know what those distances were and what the sizes were because he did not yet know what the size of the earth was. But it turns out that Aristotelus, and I think I'm missing an S here in his name, Aristotelus, there, who lived a little bit later than, than Aristarchus, figured out the size of the earth in a very ingenious way. He noticed that when he traveled to Alexandria and when he was there on June the 21st, which is the summer solstice, that's when the sun goes farthest north uh, over the, away from the equator, 23 and a half degrees away from the equator. He noticed at that point, when he looked inside a well, he could see how the sun would then shine in the well and light up the side of the well, but he could not see the bottom of the well. And if you were to take a stick and plant it in the earth, you could see that the shadow that was cast by the stick would be very short, and the angle made from the tip of the stick to where the shadow ends would be a seven degree angle. At another time, when he had traveled further down along the Nile River to Syene, which is about 500 miles further south from Alexandria, he noticed on the same day of the year, of course, a different year at that time, because you can't, you can't travel that quickly to another city uh, that far away, he would then look in the well and he would see the entire bottom of the well. He could actually see the water lighted up from the sunlight and he could put a stick in the ground at that point and there would be no shadow cast. The shadow would be extremely small. So therefore he realized that the angle then made between the sunlight and a pole that's vertically standing into the earth would be about zero degrees. Assuming that the earth was a sphere, he then surmised that the angle, when you draw an angle from the center of the earth to Alexandria and from the center of the earth to Syene, that those two lines would make an angle of seven degrees. Also realizing that if you travel all the way around the Earth like this, that would then represent an angle of 360 degrees. And from that he followed a simple reasoning. He said that the distance between Alexandria and Syene, let's call that a small d, so you can then say that the distance between the two cities divided by the angle of seven degrees, and that's kind of a strange looking d, so let me try that again. There we go. So the distance between Alexandria and Syene, divided by seven degrees, should be equal or proportional to the distance all the way around the Earth. So let's call the distance all the way around the Earth big D, big D, divided by 360 degrees. So here's, it's simple then. If you then figure out how big small d is, if you can actually figure out the distance between Alexandria and Syene, then you should be able to figure out the distance around the world or the circumference of the world. So we can say then that the distance around the world is equal to the distance from between the two cities times the ratio of 360 degrees divided by 7 degrees. With other words, you get this number and that number multiplied times d gives you the total circumference of the earth. Now all he needed to do was figure out how far it was from Alexandria to Syene. Well, people travel that distance all the time and there used to be caravan trains also that traveled between the two cities. And the amount of distance that a, that a, a caravan uh, covers in a single day is fairly fixed. Camels walk at a certain gait and they would take a certain amount of time to travel during the day. And so you can then count the number of days it would take to travel between cities and from that you can come up with a pretty good estimate as to how far it is. So based upon that, he figured out the distance around the circumference of the earth and he came up with a number that it's actually fairly close to the actual distance. There's, historically, there are different estimates of what the number was that he came up with, but it was close. It was maybe within 5% or less from the actual size of the Earth. And so now, couple that information and, and reasoning with what Aristarchus decided or, or determined. So, for example, he knew that the Earth versus the Moon had a diameter of about 3.5 times the size. So the diameter of the Earth is 3.5 times the diameter of the Moon. And from what Aristotelus uh, figured out, we knew the size of the Earth. From that, we then figured out the size of the Moon. And then, once we know the size of the Earth, and realizing the angle, so what you can do then is you can then look in the sky and determine the size of the Moon, the angular size of the Moon, like this. We could then say that if we knew this size, and we can see this angle right here, let's call this angle phi, then from that you should be able to figure out the distance to the moon. And with the geometry that they understood at the time, they were actually able to do that. Likewise, realizing that the sun, 
the diameter of the sun was, in their estimation, about six times the diameter of the earth. Again, looking and seeing how big the sun looked in the sky, finding the angular distance just the same. And of course, the angular size of the sun is about the same as the angular size of the moon. From that, they were able then to estimate the size of the sun. And so when they knew that the diameter of the earth was about 8,000 miles, and they figured that the sun was about six times the size, and they figured that the diameter of the sun was about 50,000 miles. Of course, by now we know that it's much closer to a million miles, about, about 860,000 or so. But again, the realization that the sun was much, much bigger than the earth, and that the earth was much bigger than the moon, that they knew the relative size, and actually knew the size of the earth, and realizing the earth was a sphere, and you could actually travel around it, that was a tremendous discovery done more than 2,000 years ago. It's just amazing when, you're clear, when, when you allow observations to guide you in making logical decisions based upon the, the data that you collect and based on the mathematical reasoning, you can come up with just about anything, knowledge, any knowledge required to understand the universe. So you can see that there was a lot of work done by the early Greeks and a lot of advancement in the understanding of, at that time, what we knew was the universe. And so don't, don't underestimate the power of observation and the power of reasoning. That's how they did that.